As Delta State Governor Ifanyo Koa is unveiled as Atiku Abubakar's running mate, the former vice president gives his reasons for his selection. And Northern Group urges Marik and Khan to form their own political party. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacon. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has given reasons for picking Delta State Governor Ifanyo Koa as his running mate for the 2023 presidential elections. He gave the reasons in his remarks at the unveiling of, the, of Okoa as his running mate at the PDP National Headquarters in Abuja. Okoa and his River State counterpart, Nyeso Mwike, were the two governors speculated to be considered for the slot. Joining us to discuss these are political analysts, Dayo Kayadi and Upunabo Inko Taria. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yes, good evening, Marian and uh, Nigerians. All right, great. I'll start with you, Upunabo. Um, uh, Governor Yeson Wike seemed to be the touted one at the time. He seemed to be the one that was on everybody's lips as to who could be um, the favoured vice presidential um, candidate. Um, in fact, up until the moment where the governor of Delta State was announced, um, a lot of people believed that it would be Yesom Wike. But then, of course, um, Governor Okowa emerged as the running mate for um, Vice President um, Atiku Abubakar. And I'm wondering, of course, the question in everybody's mind is, was this a strategic move or was this uh, um, uh, an election winning move? Well, um, Marianne, in the choice of a vice presidential candidate, a penetrating thought is given to a whole lot of issues the capacity, the personnel, the reach. Of course, when you talk about capacity, I'm talking of financial, I'm talking of legitimacy which is acceptability we are talking of reach we are talking of somebody that will add value to the presidency and to the campaign first before the presidency if eventually they win and uh, uh, the forthcoming general elections so you have a portmanteau of issues that is being taken under advisement and the presidential candidate will definitely want somebody that he can confide in somebody that will be, because your vice president ought to be uh, likened to your wife. Somebody that you're comfortable with. There is that what you call compatibility, you know? Somebody that when, even when you're out of the country, you're, my, you're at peace, your mind is at rest, that uh, nothing untoward will happen. You see, so you see a whole lot of issues. Some Sign, are signposted by people, some will not be said on air, but they are actually being considered in the choice of a vice president of a running mate. I remember one of the governors, somebody, a, a former president said to him, uh, I want Mr. A to be a deputy governor, and the governor said, no, there's a likelihood that Mr. A was going to kill me because my deputy governor in order to take over. So there are so many considerations, so many considerations in the choice of a deputy of a running mate. And I think all these issues would have been considered. Most of them would have been considered and uh, Mr. Tiku Alajabuwa Kachiku felt the person he would be quite comfortable with is Okoa. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kayade, um, let's look at the fact that a, uh, let's look up the notoriety between these men. Um, in fact, at, at some point, the governor of Akwaibom State seemed to have been in the mix. You know, he was called uh, as one of the people that was approved by the National Working Committee. And so we had an Okoa in Yesungwike and uh, um, probably the Udo Emanuel. But then in terms of strategy of winning, knowing that the 2023 elections is going to be a very interesting one. And of course, uh, the best man has to win. And then 
It means that the parties have to, um, you know, have strategic moves that or measures in place to win this election. So looking at the the spread of uh, Governor Wike and uh, Governor Okoa, uh, between these two gentlemen, wouldn't Wike be a better person to run with in terms of reaching all the way across the country? But again, um, I just want you to tell me what you think the difference between Okoa and Wike is and why you think he was the best choice uh, for the vice president. Uh, uh, you see, when you are trying to compare people for a particular position, whoever could be penciled down must have shown some kind of dexterity to be able to hold on to that position. What I'm trying to say is, there's no doubt about it. Both Wiki and Okoa are both qualified to occupy the position of running mail to His Excellency Asiku Abubakar. But either we like it or not, one person will have to be chosen. And in choosing one out of these two names we've mentioned, the PDP leadership, in their own wisdom, set up a committee to try as much as possible to interrogate, not even only Wiki and uh, Okoa, but I think about four or five people. All right? But one way or the other, there will be a little thing that will be standing somebody out. And between you and me, that is in the area of technical know-how. Technical know-how. Abu Bakar Atiku is a politician to the core. Nike is a politician to the core. <laughs> but when you look at the uh, antecedent and political trajectory of the uh, Isiayi Okoa, we find out that he is a technocrat. Bearing in mind that even the president, I mean, the, the, the flag bearer of PDP, in person of uh, His Excellency Abubakar Atiku, when he was the vice president to Baba Abbasanjo there, he was instrumental to, to bringing in a lot of technocrats into that government. In person of people like uh, Okoju Uwala, you, you know where Okoju Uwala is now. In the person of the people like uh, Zeku Ezile and all that. So, he himself, I mean, Atiku, is looking for somebody who in future can even stand up to say, yes, I want to be the next president. And as a vice president, he must be able to stand in whenever the president is outside of the country. That is one. Two, when you also look at the kind of body composture of uh, uh, uh Okoa, you find out that he has a kind of a resemblance to that of uh, Atiku Abubakar. So to a very large extent, you can see the way you, you can be able to predict if eventually the two of them occupy that position in Asuro, one will now be able to foresee the kind of government that we are going to have. And again, when you also look at national cohesion, and then balancing of the political equation in Nigeria towards winning elections. Because every other, every other part, every party exists to win elections. And there is no flag there at this point that we want to lose this election. So you want to look at somebody that will be having very high electoral value. Okay. All you right. want to see that Oko, uh, 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 Okowa, Okowa, uh, before now, be in the legislature. 
stay in the legislature, legislature. That means he has that federal outlook already. Okay. He must have made a lot of inroad into people that are also having electoral value within their constituencies in the nation. So these are part of the things that All were right. being considered okay. to now be able to come up with uh, 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 Israel Okoa okay. as a running mate to Asiko. Let me go okay. back. To, let me go well, back to Opunabo. Uh, Opunabo, let's talk about the um, the fact that many have seen the position of the vice president as a yes position, and just like uh, Mr. Kayode has said. He, um, um, Okoa seems to have the same kind of demeanor, according to him, uh, as to that of the former vice president. But then, going beyond the demeanor here, we're talking about winning elections. Is this a winning team? Because we're yet to hear uh, the announcement of other political parties and their running mates. We're talking about the APC, we're talking about the Labour Party, we're talking about the NNPP and others. Today is supposedly the deadline. Does this look like a winning team to you? And if this is... Uh, uh, go ahead. Go the, ahead. Other, the other political party is still floundering in the selection process, and I don't know why. And I think uh, I'm talking of the APC, and I think that is mainly because the standard bearer is a Muslim and from the South. So you need a Christian from the North, and that's why they're every morning the Muslim Muslim candidate, because you need somebody from the North to balance the political equation and to also get more votes. Now, I have also said that let's get back to the question you asked as the issue of uh, Okoa. I thought you were talking of the political strength or the value you to add. Am I right? Yes. Good. Now, don't forget that, um, first and foremost, you need somebody. Let me go back to why you were not chosen. You need somebody with a near impeccable courteous public persona and Okoa fits in. Now, Okoa and Wiki, Wiki has had this running battle with his brother government. Don't forget that if you remember when uh, Peter B visited the PDP headquarters to declare his intentions, or was it to pick his fault? He okay, you said, I like you because you address issues and not attack persons. That was an innuendo. He's having a running, and don't forget that these governors, whether you like it or not, have a say. I say the PDP governors have a say in who will be a running mate. Although I think we have the final say, but definitely they will be consulted. And you are having issues. Even the article himself, we can just make some snide comments against the article. And do you think that they have consigned those issues into oblivion? They have not. And they want somebody that will be presidential in nature, not abrasive, not rash. So, so, your, so you're in, saying in, that the governor of River State does not have in, a demeanor of, a, doesn't have a presidential demeanor, and you're also that saying that is he's a abusive? general perception. Yeah, they say, oh, he's bold, he's this. But your choice of words, your choice of words, and you know, there are certain offices you occupy that all eyes must be on you. Okay, look at you go to church, you say, turn that fire you. Those are not the kind of things that you come out from the mouth of the governor. Not at all. You attain a particular height and you choose your words, like we say in communication, the right words from the word basket. Because that will the very largest sense define who you are, define your character. Mm. You know, so a whole lot of issues. Even the article himself, he has sales. I think we will not come out to tell you, oh, this man said this against me. Therefore, I will not select him because the whole world will condemn him for being myopic. Then if you also talk of the rich, Okoa has the rich. Is it because he did not contest? Today we are all shouting, no, we can have the group, grassroots, he has it because he contested. Okoa did not contest. That does not mean he doesn't have the rich. And Okoa is a bridge between the south and the east. Hmm. He's an Igbo man in Delta State. He's, an, he's from Igbo, he's an Igbo, he's from Igbo origin. In Delta State, it's like a Calabari man. You have the Calabari in Abonuma, you have the Calabari in Bukuma, you have the Calabari in Degema. So to a very large extent, Okoa has also placated the East, to some extent, if you talk of the rich. 
if you look at his demeanor. So you cannot say, oh, uh, uh, when you talk of the political rich, Wike has more like that. No, it's not, it's not possible. Hmm. Wike is being said of Wike because he contested. If Oko had contested, of course, we don't know what would have happened as well. Hmm. You know, so these are some of the issues that the presidential flag bearer would have taken into consideration. And again, the uh, lieutenants, advisors, friends, and so on, would have the most step because, look, for you to emerge, there must be a unique selling point. Yes, you're all qualified, but what is that unique selling point that A has and the others lack? That is the truth about it. And that is what has happened. They have considered all this before settling for COA. And of course, when we talk about Reverend, like Carol Day rightly said, he was a legislator. He was a, 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 a governor. I don't want to talk about commissionership because, of course, that has to be state. But he has friends that cut across. Okay. So, and the, so the man of Kowa is somebody that is being appreciated by majority. He has no issues with his brother governors. No. So it is easy for the brother governors to support both the Okowa and the Okowa and Atiku ticket because he has no issues with them. Hmm. No running battle, no fiction. Okay. They, they, they the committee definitely would have considered a whole lot of this. Even though they will not come on air to say, they definitely would have considered a whole lot of this before settling for COA. Okay, let me come back to you, um, Mr. Coyote. Interestingly, um, just as Opunabo has said, he has some political strength around the border states. Um, do you see an Okoa able to split? Because we also see, let's not forget that we have a Peter Albi who's a core Southeasterner. And, he, and Upunabo made a case of him being able to convince the border states to vote for the Atiku Okoa ticket. How easy will it be for this duo to break even in the South-South and the southeast, not necessarily the southwest, because we also know that there is a Tinubu, um, you know, who is from the southwest. But how powerful uh, will these duo be in breaking even around majorly within the south? You see, let me let me let me quickly chip in there. The USP for somebody like. It shall be is that the youth are saying it's youthful, and uh, they are looking at his uh, e uh, economic acumen. Do you know that even if you have to look at that, Okoa is even more youthful than it shall be. When you put the two of them side by side, and then you, you, you engage them on how to solve the problem of Nigerian economy, do you know that Okoa will stand very tall? Now, now that in, in their own wisdom, the leaders and elders of PDP had put the name of Okoa forward. And not fully well the kind of government that he wants to call. You should listen to him very well, uh, uh, his speech after being given the, the, the ticket of PDP. He concluded that he want, the day he sworn in, he wants to start immediately. Hmm. Now, because of that, who do you think I need astronomy? And that's what in Okoa. All these things we are trying to speak about or speculate, we might not, or, or even viewers might not understand until when the proper campaign starts here in this country. Mm -hmm. Then you will be able to assess and evaluate what Israel uh, uh, Okoa is made of. Again, when you look at Okoa, look at that name, Ifiai. It's an Ipo name. There's a kind of, there's a kind of uh, 
uh, uh, affinity, closeness between its own South South and South East. I remember, I remember the other time when when he was uh, being sworn in uh, uh, for the fall. Mr. Kaede, are you still there? Because I wanted to ask a quick question. When you talk about a name, is it the names that Nigerians are voting for or are we looking at ability to deliver? Because you, you keep saying, oh, he's from the southeast. Unfortunately, I think we have lost that connection. But let me throw it back to you, Oponabo. Nigerians have gotten to a point where they're no longer voting based on sentiments. We have been sentimental over the past eight years, uh, seven and a half years running. Do you think that it's just the name? It's just the fact that, oh, he has an Igbo name or a Southeastern name that would give votes to the PDP? Again, I'm talking strategy mm, here. No, no, no. Mary, Mary Ann, I, I think what the point is trying to make is, um, is, is trying to underscore the fact that he's an Igbo man when he talks of the name. Hmm. Otherwise, I mean, uh, there are, you have people from River State answering uh, across river names, as in uh, Yoruba names and so on. So that I think what the point is trying to make actually is that he's even that he's, he's, I know he's not just an Igbo man from in Delta State, but bearing the Igbo name. I think that's the point he's just trying to make. But the truth about it is that Okoa is from the Igbo speaking part of Delta State. You know, it's like you have the jaws in Ondo, you have the jaws in the West. You can't say because they're in the West, they are not in jobs. When it has to do with uh, a job national congress, when it has to do with uh, a job a a nation, of course they participate. They even become, they even held offices. So that's the point we are trying to make. We have a job in Rivers, have a job, you have a job in Bayelsa. So you have Igbo in uh, Anambra, Igbo in Enugu, Igbo in uh, Igbo. You also have Igbo in Delta. So he's an in Delta. On, I'm sorry, you're saying the same thing again and again, just as he said. We're emphasizing on the ethnicity. We, we understand that, fair and clear. But how does this mix with getting votes? How does this get the, us that is or get the, the PDP the winning the votes that they're looking for? The because point we are making is this. It is Okoa will be more accepted by the evils Why? than any other. Why? Because he's, he's one of them. That's the point. That is, that he's one of them. He's an Igbo man. If he goes to uh, uh, Igbo State, if he goes to another, he's going to speak. In fact, they, 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 I think they have the Okoa's uh, 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 Igbo in, in Delta has the same dialect, not just language, with the Anambra people. So it's very easy for Okoa to be accepted. He will be seen as one, like a brother who, who just traveled out of this country. It's like having a brother in America or having a brother in London. That's how you'll be seen. So it is easy for him to mingle. He's going to remind them of his heritage. It's quite easy. That is why they say, because the Igbos, especially our Hanesi, they have almost, they are threatened to ostracize whoever goes for the PP slot. They want the president the, the the, uh, to become the president of the country. They are even threatened openly. You know, so... The point we are trying to make is, fine, you have a P2B there. Definitely not only both will vote for P2B. Because, like I said, we, as you have also confirmed, we've gone beyond the Basilic Polish. Like I have always told you, I don't give a damn about the party. I do, I'm more concerned about the individual. So, for House of Assembly, I can vote for Party A. For House of Reps, I can vote for Party B. For Presidency, I can vote for Party C. That is my con conclusion. Not the individual, not the party, sorry. Because at the end of the day, we are all going to suffer for it. I go for individual, and I plead with Nigeria to vote for individual. So a lot of people might vote for P2B, no doubt, but some will also have that sentiment. Depends on his oratory power when he approaches them. Some will also have that sentiment. He's also our brother. And most, okay, we are also, also PPP, so let us vote for him. So it is better for Nokoa to be presented to the Igbos than any other person to be presented to the Igbos. If you talk about placating the Igbos, because the clamor for presidency is from there. And the cry uh, against injustice, marginalization, and discrimination is also higher from there. So that's the point. That's why we are saying 
Well, he, he probably has an edge as an Igbo man. He's Okoa is an Igbo man in Delta State. That's the truth about it. Mm. So he might be more appealing. That's that just the synopsis of, of what you are trying to tell me. Okay. Um, quickly, Mr. Coyote, I think we're going to wrap up with you because I think you're back. Um, so the, the, can you hear me? Of Nigeria. Mr. Coyote, can you hear me? It's the point that the we consider. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. I think you were saying something. Yeah, it's a point, it's, a, it's another point that the evils we consider. Because either you like it or not, even look at that name, if you are here. Like I was saying that before the, the line went on, there's a, there's a close affinity between that delta and the southeast. And to that extent, there is a strong belief that uh, uh, Okowa is an Igbo man too. It's just like when you are looking at the Yoruba, the Yoruba people and then the Ajashe people. There is, there is the blood of Yoruba in the Ajashe people of Kotonou. So also, the, the same way we should look at it. And again, whether you are picking, whether you are picking Okowa or you are picking whoever it is, what, what we Nigerians should be looking for is about performance, competence, a team, a team that we kick start our, our economic progression. Immediately this morning, a team that will ensure there is, that there is a workable, systemic, and cohesive Nigeria come 2023. A okay. team that will ensure security. A team that will ensure that this important strike of ASU and other professional bodies is being put to a stop. Okay. A team that we know that importation of oil is fraudulent. And then ensure that there are, there are a lot of uh, uh, scattered, uh, I mean, uh, uh, modular refineries scattered everywhere in our country. Okay. A team that will be able to look forward, to look inward and be proactive than just be reactionary. That is what we should be looking for. Okay. And interestingly, we have somebody who has an experience who has been in the presidency for eight years, and then who, who was instrumental in the successes of that government by bringing in a lot of technocrats. Now, in his own wisdom, he's now bringing in a technocrat as the vice president. Well, I want to say thank you, Mr. Daya Kayede. Unfortunately, uh, time is not on our, uh, our side. Daya Kayede, Upunaboyin Kotaria, both political analysts, thank you so much. Our eyes are watching, of course, for the campaigns to see how it plays out. Thank you so much. Thank you for remembering me, Miriam. <laughs> thank you and so much. I'm going to Nigeria once more. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the Muslim-Muslim ticket because that seems to be the question. Um, pointing towards the APC right now as we all await uh, who the choice of the running mate for Asiwadru Bolamet Tidubu will be. We'll be right back after this break.